Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow. So, in Washington, the conversation about infrastructure and budget reconciliation is running hot and heavy, both the good, the bad, and the ugly. Right now, nothing is really completely clear, not the outcomes, not the spending, not the scoring, not even the taxing. Though, let me tell you, there's going to be plenty of spending, plenty of taxing, and unfortunately, plenty of weird scoring to go along with it. Now, if there's some breaking news tonight about Governor Andrew Cuomo's plight and President Biden's comments, we will cut right into it for you. But staying with infrastructure, the story could rest on CBO and JTC tax scoring. That's Congressional Budget Office and Joint Tax Committee scoring. A lot of Republicans are waiting for the official numbers. According to the Hill website, the Joint Committee on Taxation issued a report yesterday saying the bipartisan infrastructure deal would raise only $51 billion in new tax revenues over the next 10 years. That is just a fraction of the $550 billion in proposed new spending. 51's a bad number for the deal. Now, up to $300 billion could come, could I say, from repurposing unused COVID money, but the rest of it could be a day in the country, or should I say a day in the country's deep woods. Part of the good news of the infrastructure deal is there's no phony IRS tax gap, and there's no corporate income tax hikes, and there's no infrastructure bank, so that's good. But the bipartisan group is not going to pay for infrastructure with dynamic scoring or ending Medicare rebates or imposing drug price controls or $30 billion of a cryptocurrency tax. So they look revenue short to me, probably about $100 billion worth, which means Republican support is by no means a given. Now, we're going to have Senator Bill Haggerty in the next block to comment on all this. But let me say, my biggest concern is still the budget reconciliation package. This is the taxing, spending, entitling, greening, transformational, workers' paradise utopia that the left-wing Democratic progressives yearn for. It will all be jammed into the reconciliation bill. Amnesty for illegals might even be part of it. Banning voter photo IDs could even be part of it. There's no telling. And for those of us who do not wish to transform America into a woke-driven exercise in central planning, regulating, critical race theory, cancel culture, and free enterprise vision, I think of this as Bulgaria before the Berlin Wall came down. This proposal must be stopped. Must be stopped. It is the number one priority for people of all stripes who love this country and want to save it. And whatever the Democrats don't get in infrastructure, they're going to try to jam it into reconciliation. Part of the bad of infrastructure is this Green New Dealness, which covers about $140 billion, or roughly one quarter of the bipartisan package. Now, there will be massive subsidies for everything remotely related to green, including changing the electricity power grid, boosting electric vehicle car sales, financing electric gas pumps, a.k.a. electric charging stations. And according to some conservative friends, the word equity appears 64 times in this 2,700-page infrastructure bill. 64 times. Now, this is equal opportunity at the starting line, not enough anymore, right? The woke, we need equality at the finish line. And if not equity, unfortunately, it's based on gender, race, other identity groups, then federal subsidies will flow galore. Of course, I don't like any of that. Now, in terms of support, you can never buy me off. Now, you could temporarily rent me if you just gave me a free Tesla, which is kind of what they're doing with free everything that's green. I'm joking here, but not entirely. So there's the good, the bad, and the ugly on infrastructure. But, folks, as far as budget reconciliation is concerned, there is nothing good, it is all bad, and it's getting more and more ugly. Now, let me stop right here. Again, we're going to have Senator Bill Haggerty. 
on to talk much more about infrastructure and reconciliation, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I just want to get this riff off my chest early in the show. First up, however, we're going to pivot and go to another hot story, and that is the demise of Chinese stocks. As the Chinese Communist government intensifies and spreads its regulatory crackdowns on public companies, some $400 billion of the value of U.S.-listed Chinese firms has gone down the drain. In places like California's Orange County Employees Retirement System or state funds like CalPERS or CalSTRS, they're all going to have to change their strategy. You could see what happened. Profit tutoring companies in China have been decimated by Chinese government intervention, and there's much more. So 